was making this part this morning and uh, one of the features on the part is a, a bored hole. Um, fairly tight tolerance. This hole will eventually accept a plastic bushing that will be pressed into it. Uh, bushing diameter is half inch, 0 .500 and the, uh, I want an interference fit between that bushing and this part so I want this hole to be about one to two thousandths undersize. So 498, 499 diameter. Um, so I thought I'd, it's lunch time, so I thought I'd take a little break, make a video, and show you guys how to, various methods of measuring a hole like this. Alright, so I've, I've bored this thing. It's a little bit undersized, I know, because I've snuck up on it and I've checked, so it's, uh, hopefully it's not oversized. But uh, let's crank it out of the way here so we can get to the hole and I'll, I'll show you a few different ways to measure something like this. Um, one of the old school methods is to simply use a pair of inside calipers. All right, these are, are generally used for rough measurements, you know, non-critical measurements. But with a little bit of care, a little bit of practice, they can be used to measure quite close, you know, quite tight holes. All right, let's just uh, try it on this hole and see where we're at. Just as a something to some place to start. Okay, this type of tool you. You put on axis of the hole and you just open it up a little bit at a time till you get a little bit of drag on the sides of the hole. And you gotta kinda move it around, you gotta kinda feel, you know, make sure you're you're perfectly on, on the center line of the hole. And just kinda play with it a little bit. So you're getting a little bit of drag, okay? And this, since this is a transfer type tool, you want to transfer this measurement to something that you can turn it into a, a number, in this case a micrometer. Okay, so now we'll just measure the, the distance across the, the points on this caliper. Same way, you move it around, kind of play with it, move the micrometer in a little bit at a time until it starts to so you start to feel a little little drag on it. And we're getting about about 494. Okay, 494 thousandths. So that's pretty good, but I don't know if I'd want to trust this on a hole that I'm trying to hold to one to two, one or two thousandths. So a better option would be to use a small hole gauge. All right, these these come in sets. And they they range from one eighth inch up to a half inch. It's a good tool to for a measurement like this. It's fairly accurate, very easy to use. It's used basically the same as the, the caliper. You line it up on on the center line of the hole, and then you just slowly start to open it up until you feel a little bit of drag on the sides of the hole. This requires some skill and some practice to use accurately so you get repeatable measurements. But you know, it's like anything else, you have to practice to learn how to do it well. Alright, move it around, make sure you're you can kind of feel when you're on, on the center line. Okay? You got a little bit of drag going there, so let's let's transfer this measurement to micrometer. Put a number with it. The other one was what did I say, 494? This one is this measurement is 494, okay? That's pretty close. That's pretty consistent. I'd still want to believe this one over over this one. Alright, so we're at 494. Um, how else can we measure this hole? Well, there's a, there's a third option. That's a telescoping gauge. Okay, these come in sets ranging from about 5 sixteenths in diameter up to about 6 inches. So they have a lot more range than a set of small hole gauges. And then in this range they're, they're pretty comparable as far as accuracy goes. Um, the difference is how you use this tool. You do not use this tool like a small hole gauge. You don't line it up on, on the center line of the hole and kind of feel around or feel your way into it. This is done differently. Okay, to use a telescoping gauge, you put it inside the hole, you loosen up the lock, okay, put the gauge in the hole, compress it until you can get it all the way in. 
okay? And you hold it off center, like this, off axis. Snug up the lock, just a little bit, doesn't take much. And then you rock the telescope engage over center. Just rock it over center once. Okay, and what you've done now is you've transferred, transferred the diameter of the hole. You force this gauge to center up in it by rocking it over center like that. So this should be a good representation of the diameter of that hole. We got we got 494 with the other tools. Let's see what we get with this one. Okay, we got 494 and a half. All right. Now these are going to be these are going to be good. These two tools are going to be pretty comparable. I, I'd I'd rely on either one of these before I'd rely on the inside calipers. So 494 and a half. Let's call it 494 because I don't want to go oversize. Okay, I'd rather sneak up on it. I'd rather end up a little small with my finish cut than a little large. So if I wanted to end up at uh, 498 to 499, that means I've got about six, six and a half thousandths to go. So let's take six thousandths off, see where that gets us. There's six thousandths. Center back up on the hole. I'm using a digital readout, so it's real easy. Um, if you're not using a digital readout, if you're using dials, don't forget to take the backlash out of your lead screw. Always approach a position from one direction. Okay, we get it back on center. And also if you're using like a mini mill or something like that, it doesn't hurt to lock your tables down when you're boring. A mill like this, hold it small, it doesn't matter, but smaller mill it can. So let's go ahead and take a cut. Hopefully a finished cut and see what we come up with. make a, a few, few spring passes through just without resetting the boring head just to make sure you get all the spring out of the boring bar. I usually take four passes, two in and two back out. All right, let's move it aside and see what we have here. I'm going to go with telescope engage again. Put it in the hole, loosen your lock, this hole's a little shallow, so it's kind of hard to harder than it would be if it was a deeper hole. All right, so a little bit off off axis, snug up the gauge, and rock it through center just once. Okay, you transfer the diameter of the hole to your gauge. Now you go ahead and measure it. We're shooting for 498 to 499. Got 499 plus a couple tenths. Okay, 499 499.3. That's good. I don't want to go too big. See, see I, I, I didn't want to take too much off, so I backed off a little bit. It was a good thing or I would have gone over. All right, another method, final method I want, I'd like to show you is, is with the gauge pin. Okay, Gauge pins come in 1,000th inch increments, ranging from about, well, I have them as small as a 16th up to a half inch in diameter. It's a lot of pins. You know, it's one pin for each size. But it's, it's the best way to measure a hole like this, the, the most accurate, common way to measure it until you get start getting into fancy gauges and things. All right, so this, is, uh, this pin is 498. This represents the small end of my hole. This should go in easily, right? I'm going to be in between 498 and a half inch, 500. Okay, so this goes in easily. And this is 500. I do not want this one to go in. All right, it does not, so I'm good. I mean, this, is, this is the diameter of my bushing, so it should press in nicely. So that, that's pretty much it. Just four different measure, four different methods of measuring a hole accurately.